five and a fry. Five and a fry. There it is. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I am your host, Fable Angelo. And this is your boy, your co-host, Jay Diddy. And this is Five and the Fry Podcast. On, the place where you come and get five course combination, conversation. Okay. Not combination. Combination, conversation. right. Conversation. Combination, right. Uh-huh. With the side item of rainbow toenails. Toenails? Fingernails? <laughs> Fingernails or toenails? Fingernails. Fingernails. Uh, excuse but see, me. But you, you're supposed to be like, F.A., what's on the menu, man? You I, no, don't... I'm supposed to say J. Diddy. Okay. J. Diddy. I'm waiting for that. Can you please let us know what's on the menu for tonight, my brother? Man, you know what, F.A., I'm glad you asked, man. Are, I you, happy now? Are you happy I, I asked actually, you? I'm, I'm enthused right now. Because I know this is your show and everything, but can I get my own little two cents in the first in the beginning, <coughs> man? If that's okay you, you with know you, what? you can have three cents, man. Thank you, I appreciate that, man. We have a wonderful, wonderful, eclectic mix of topics for you guys today. Some funny stuff, some serious things. You're gonna learn some information today. We're gonna laugh. We're gonna have some fun, and it's coming right at you, five in the fry. We back, season three, episode two. And you know what? I always wanted to do that too. Like, let's, hey, man. We we, we 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 back, man. We back. We back. And we back. And we back. Because the old boys. setup, the old setup, we was like three feet away from each other. But, yeah. all right. So, what, did, did you go down the list yet? So, so <laughs> starting off, Huggy, can I get Huggy? Where's the board, Huggy? Thank yeah, you. Thank right. you. So, Alicia Keys, this is actually one that's going to make you think it's going, it's going to. Things to make you go. Exactly. So, Alicia Keys took her son to the. The nail factory, the nail salon, the nail technician factory, something. Wherever you go to get your nails painted and stuff. The Asians. Oh, it, well, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah they, for the they, most they, part. They, yeah. So she took her son there and he asked to get him painted. He asked his mom, can I get my nails painted different colors? And she was like, yeah. Uh, long story short, he ended up not wanting to because he felt like people were not going to like it. He felt like people were going to judge him yes and that broke my heart it really did did it really it did a little bit man i think i might have cried a little bit inside Something. i am like i'm a I'm just sensitive uh, i thought the ladies like sense never mind so Bro. you felt bad for the child i did the the fact that he knew so early and she mentioned this in her video that people were not going to like it they knew he knew that they were going to judge him this four-year-old boy walking around with rainbow rainbow color fingernails he knew that people weren't going to like it and they were going to say something about it and and i guess that feeds it in, feeds into this gender situation can a can a boy can a man have his fingernails painted not unclear like not clear not the clear paint i've done clear paint before yeah. i'll admit that as a and i know some of y'all have done clear paint too so is it really paint whatever so polish polish i've done the clear polish situation and I still felt manly, yeah. You feel me? So, but if I, if I show up with rainbow colors or nice satin maroon, like check which it out, is one bro. of my favorite colors. Check it out, bro. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, I'm actually like, like you know, there's anything different about me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I do, nigga. You so, fruity. So, so if that's it's, that's what you feel. That a man with fingernail polish is fruity. You fruity. And she and then Alicia Keys also mentioned that there are a lot of all a lot of guys are doing it. Hey, show me, show me one. I, I I'm sorry, I haven't seen too many guys with like I, rock rock band guys. You know what I'm saying? Heavy metal dudes. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, those type of guys. Yeah. I, those I, I guys. Better. Those guys are what you call goth, and they paint their fingernails black which is totally different from what she was referring to, painting your fingernails and your toenails, Ooh. rainbow colors, bright colors. Yeah. Um, I don't know how I feel about that, man. I, you know what? I do know how I feel about that. It'll be fruity. I mean, and I mean, no offense to those, you know, the homosexual community and this and that, but I'm just <coughs> telling it like it is. If you a dude and you're painting your nails, Rainbow Different color. bright colors, yeah. rainbow well, colors. Well, just period. Like, it will come across as fruity. Am I wrong or am I right? I believe that you're going to come across as homosexual. So let me ask you this. 
if you had a four year old, three year old, two year, whatever the case, a son. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Jeremiah. Yeah. You know. No, let's let's do younger. Let's do younger first. Because the implications of this is not just about he I don't I don't think he understands homosexuality, the four year old boy, right? So he just understands that the people are not gonna like a boy wearing fingernail polish. Obviously he's experienced being judged before and he knows perhaps. this is going to stand out. Or he's either seen that, maybe a bully palace. But maybe my thinking is wouldn't that take away his from his individuality? I'm not going to let you be who you want to be because the world says you you're only you're you're gay you're homosexual if you have your nails painted and I'm doing a lot of this and I didn't you mean are, to man. but I am doing I'm you sorry. coming you coming across as pretty fruity right now Jay Diddy I don't know how I feel about this man so <laughs> you avoid you avoid the question I, okay so the way that I feel about it if I had a son. And he came to me and he told me that he wanted to do his nails rainbow color. Mm-hmm. 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 That's tough, man. It is. I, I, no. No, son. No. No, son. Daddy, but I really, I really. Wait. Daddy. <laughs> Daddy, I really, that, I really, how my, really want. That's how my four-year-old son was saying. I'm, I'm, I was trying to do a little. We, a we got more. Different. We got deeper issues than Panty <laughs> Seagull. I was trying brother. to do a couple different versions. Okay. To let you pick one. Okay. But he's pleading now. He's like, well, I don't want to push it. I don't want to push it on you like that. But You are kind of. But it, it's like, I can't. I don't know if, if, if you would have asked me the same thing if the shoe was on the other foot. Yeah. I would, LJ, I have a four-year-old son. LJ, Daddy, I want my nails painted. These colors. That's a tough one, right? I would have to explain to him. Why would I have to explain that? You know, normally women paint their fingernails. If I'm not, if I'm not a part of this societal thing, I don't know, man. I'll probably be like, "Hey, man, go ahead." But I'm sorry, bro. I was raised different, man. Yeah, and it's it's a difference. It's a difference between being a man and being raised as a man, and being a woman and being raised with feminine qualities. You dig what I'm saying? Okay. It's, it's a difference. The way that I was raised, man, I can't speak for everybody. I can only speak for Fabelangelo. I feel you. And the way that Fabelangelo was raised, Go ahead. that's not manly, man. I want to teach my son how to be a man, mm-hmm. not how to be feminine. Now, if, this, if it came across to where this is something that he desires, then I will have to question where that desire came from. Man, you, you like put me in my place right now. Yeah, yeah, man. In my, no, it's, it's, this is just my opinion. I get you, though. This is how I feel. This is how I would strongly feel. If this was my child, that's how I would approach the situation. Okay. I would have to question, why would you want to paint your fingernails rainbow colors? We have to get past that first. And then we can have the conversation of individuality. Is it the rainbow colors that's bothering you or the fact that he wants them to get painted it, wants them painted all together? It's two individual cases. It's it's the the rainbow colors is the biggest issue. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Because you understand, son, like, you know, like this, it's like sometimes you have to step in as a parent and make decisions for your child because your child doesn't understand what they're doing. And I'm glad you said that because I think I forget what celebrity Charlie's Theron, some some female celebrity is raising her son as a girl, or vice versa. I forget who it was, but yeah. And the child is about four or five years old, and instead of saying no, you're not a boy or you're not a girl, you you were born. I, I wish I had more details on that, but you know, you pretty much hit it on the head. Like you're gonna have to make those some hey. You, a lot of things are not going to, going to be up for interpretation. There is, it's not going to be a lot of gray areas. I'm gonna have nah. to take control, and when you get a little older, you can make those decisions on your own, pretty much. Sometimes you but have to step in and be a parent. Be man. that as it may, you know, this nail paint situation. Uh, I, you kind of <coughs> bless you. Kind of, you kind of got me thinking. Like, yeah, I, I, I agree, man. I agree, 100. Yeah. percent I will kind of shut that down. And I mean, I'm I'm not telling nobody else how to raise their kids. I'm just telling you, if I had a child, that's how I would approach the situation. You know what I'm saying? And speaking of approaching situations. I was just about to say something about how this guy, you might know, Trevor Noah. Trevor Noah. He pretty much said that he would never live with anybody. 
including his girlfriend. And you not not only F.A., he will never live with his wife. If he did so choose to get married, breaking news, Trevor Noah says, and he believes that you do not have to live together. If you're in a relationship, you're dating, you're exclusive, even if you walk down the aisle and you say, I do, Trevor Noah fully 100% believes that you don't, you don't have to, and nor should you live together because it ruins some things. What he feels, exactly he feels that those relationships that, you know, when you are living together, they end in divorce at okay. quite an alarming rate, so to speak. So what are your thoughts on that, man? So You can't live with your wife, man. So, so basically, the conclusion that he made was the reason for so many uh, divorces mm-hmm. is because the couple lives together. Yes. And that's the deciding factor. Yes. He told that's an interesting thought, man. I mean, I can't really say that I agree or disagree. I would have to say there would have to be further investigation on that, man. And I would have to know where he gets his facts from, where he gets his information from. No, this is straight from how he, you know. And this is just personal. This is just personal. How he feels. He man. just feel like we're we're not a cookie cutter. We're we're not all the same. Like, so this is the personal philosophy of his. This is a personal philosophy. We're and we're all different. You know, one thing may not be made for me, and it might fit you perfectly. And I that goes with the end of like when we're talking about the nail painting situation. Right. That individual sense. That yeah. I know who I am, and this is what I prefer, and I'm not gonna let anybody else tell me what I prefer and what I don't prefer. This right. is me. This is me. This is who I am. Just because you're in those boundaries, don't mean that I have to be in those boundaries. So, I guess I don't know. Hopefully, he could find someone who's okay with not living with him that he could settle down with and not really settle down with in the <laughs> same house. <laughs> but you know, you know I got to thinking too. What if you have kids? That'd be weird. Kid, kids, kids. How are you supposed to not live with your spouse? Your, you know, I, I understand that some people who are not with their mate and they have kids, they make that situation work. But I'm madly in love with this woman, and I have a, I'm married. Or I'm not married, but I'm still in love, and I have a kid. I want to see my kid. Like this ain't we not separated or nothing. Well, let kids me, growing up with yeah. in between households. Like what's going on with that? Well, Trevor, let me, let me let me challenge. I guess I'm playing Trevor now. Nah, Trevor, I what? I thought you I was playing Belangelo. Now do I'm the, Trevor. You have to do the. Uh, I, I'm 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 Trevor now. Never mind. Uh, I, never mind. I'm, stick to that. That didn't you. work. Okay. You'd be, you'd so, be, you'd be anyways, as Faye Belangelo, allow me to challenge your state of thought and say. Who is to say that the traditional way that we were taught is the correct way to live? That a man and a woman is supposed to live together under the same house. Uh-huh. Who's to say that that's correct? And if we were if we were to have children, who's to say that we are all supposed to live under the same roof? So you're going back to like the pedagogy. You're going back to the inception of, hey, we married now, I was married now. You live in another village. I live. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, who it's, established that once I say I do, you we live in the same tent? The Bible speaks about this. Ah, there's a verse. Not quite a hundred percent sure where, ah. but it speaks about Ecclesiastes. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Turn your books to uh-huh. Ecclesiastes, uh-huh. chapter fourteen, uh-huh. verse three. So, in verse three. <laughs> He says that she will not live with me. I said not, she not, that's a, okay. will not live with me. Something about a woman, she must cling to her husband. Like, she must leave her uh, crib, okay. leave the home, like, leave the fam, and cling to her husband. Is, okay. I'm paraphrasing, of course. I used to know that verse. I, I should go back, maybe. But, you know, maybe that's what it derived from. But... Okay. I'm thinking about too. Like, there's some things that we, as a society, say that's not really in the Bible. Like, shacking is not in the Bible, but a Christian person will tell you, "You better not be shacking. It's in the Bible." <laughs> no, it's not. That's how they say it. It's not. You better not be shacking with the finger and everything. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> it's. It, it, you see where I'm going with it, though. I feel you. Okay. I feel you. I don't know 
Well, well, we we just established that it is the Bible. But but is there any like everybody didn't read the Bible like before the Bible? Like what was people? I guess we, we diving co deep into this. We diving deep into this. Yeah. So I don't know if it can work for me. I don't think so. I don't know. I think that I'm I'm the type that would want to have my spouse, my lady, living with me. You said you would not want her. No, living I want with her you? living with me. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I okay. Could. I'm sorry. Some guys will say it otherwise, like Trevor. But is Trevor a pimpus? Like some people probably like. Are you, are you pimping? You trying? Hey, my main is over there. She on First Street, but my other, my other lady, she on Third Street, and then the and my other lady, is he on something like that? That would Could make his you main woman believe that. Oh, if he he why he don't want to live with me because he want time with other. One, that, one young ladies would, as well like what's would, going on Trev definitely make you question Trevor Bear yeah you know what? what's going on why I can't come up in why can't, let me in this house boy you that's, better let me in this house that's how she did <laughs> I'm gonna leave a toothbrush in there I'm gonna slowly creep I'm, that's what uh, happens though so yeah. we done spent a lot of time on oh, Trevor I'm sorry Trevor man. you got some explaining to do but my, th my main question to you is like okay what if you have a kid so um Speaking of kids, speaking of people acting like kids. <laughs> Should you what you want to run with this one? Man, go for it, man. So breaking news. Three judges were arrested in May. Guess what for? What was it for, J. Diddy? Three Indiana judges suspended after White Castle brawl that left two of them wounded. Somebody got shot up in his piece, bro. Word. Yes. I didn't know it was a fire. They firearm breaking out ball. pistols, bro. Like, come on, these judges is they gangsters, man. Back yeah. in May, three Indiana judges got into a fight. It was the crescendo of an incident brimming with colorful details. <laughs> a gaggle of judges drinking the night before a judicial conference. A failed attempt to visit a strip club. That's what got called me, the bro. Red Garter a brawl in the parking lot of an Indiana, and, and they end up at White Castle. Harold and Kumar was even there. Word. You feel me? Word. No, they weren't, but I just wanted to say that. So yeah. the altercation apparently started sometime after 3 a.m. when one of the judges, Sabrina Bell, raised a middle finger at two men yelling from a passing SUV. Two of them. And she probably, yes. So this was random. These were random Maybe individuals that she was flipping the bird to. She's already intoxicated, so it could be. And she's a judge. And this ended after one of these men shot two of the judges. So the guys in the SUV, you got to stick your middle fingers up. They was packing. They had them tools on them. And might, might, might I remind you guys, this is all after a failed attempt <laughs> to visit a strip club. Please remind them of that. A failed, how do you fail to visit <laughs> the strip club? That's what happened? That's a better question. Between you leaving the house and you reaching the strip club that you were unable to achieve getting to the strip club. Unsuccessful. Unsuccessful. You were successful at becoming a judge, but unsuccessful at, at entering a strip, strip club. club. Okay. The court found that the three, Andrew Adams, Bradley Jacobs, and Sabrina Hill, had engaged in judicial misconduct by appearing in public in an intoxicated state and behaving in an inju injudicious manner and by becoming involved in a verbal altercation. That's a lot. That's Long a lot. story short, they in trouble. Act, out there acting the fool. The details are just alarming, man. And these are judges, these man. These are judges. These I'm are people to... that someone's life is being decided by these individuals that are out there acting a fool. And might I remind you one more time, Failing <laughs> to visit a strip club. Case closed. Man, I'm sorry. Man. That's just, I don't, that's I don't, just something a lot of people are not going to feel. It. I'm sorry for the people that and live in Indianapolis, man. That's... that's. Uh, so, uh, should, they should definitely be fired? Or just... That's it? What, oh, yeah, well, just there are fired? some... Then, no, okay. What am I reading? They incited a, a violent okay. altercation where two people got... Shot. Someone they incited it. She Kaiser. flipped the bird at two guys that 
ended up, you okay, know. Okay, the court suspended both Jacobs and Bell for 30 days without pay. Adams, who pleaded guilty in September to one count of misdemeanor battery, is suspended for 60 days without pay. He was sentenced to 365 days in jail a year, but was required to only serve two. In White Castle, the incident. Two days in jail? That's what you said? You said he was... Yeah. He's supposed to get 365, but he only served two days in jail. Is that justice? That's a, that's a smack on the wrist. But they're hyping it up to, to make it seem like their punishments fit the crime. And my, I'm not necessarily... They weren't the ones who shot at somebody, though. They got shot. That's what happened, judges. You go out there drunk, trying to paint the town. Acting a fool. And getting the altercations at White them, Castle. And remind them again. And remind you one final time, this is what happens when three judges fail to visit a strip club. Sound like somebody should have been, you know, watching over them for, lo- for low management. You know what I'm saying? Like a lot ah. of them players in the NBA, this low management thing ah. is is critical right now. Low <laughs> management. That sounds like an old Negro spirit. Low management. Low like management. When is Kawhi going to play? I paid my money. I, I paid, paid my money. Good money. Good I, hard I earned money. To see the Clippers play. And your boy Kawhi, he ain't even suited up. He ain't booted. He's not even planning on touching the court tonight. I heard that they tried to make it seem like it was because of an injury. They ended up getting fined for this, for keeping him out the game. Okay. This is a nationally televised game. The people want to see it, but he on the bench because of lower management. Mike had Michael Jordan, the GOAT. GOAT. The GOAT. The GOAT. Not unmistakable. 85, 1985. 86, 86, 86, 85. Same era, you know. The GOATs. Goat. Sorry. Period. Anyways. So he, he chimed in on this, too. You get paid to play. Yeah. You ain't play? Why are you getting paid? Yeah. So there were a couple of options or alternatives or solutions, potential solutions to this problem. Because, of course, I understand it from – a team's perspective and from a, a player's perspective. We want to make sure that we're healthy enough to compete for a championship in the postseason. The long run. In the long run. Especially if my player is injury prone. He suffered injuries before. So we want to make sure he doesn't get injured on our in our attempt to go for a championship. Yeah. So I understand that point. At the same time, you have to understand there are a lot of people that pay good hard-earned money to see Been working all week. specific individuals play. And who knows? This could be their only chance yeah. to see you play live. And you're not even suited up. Shame. So Shame. a couple of potential um, options that I heard some people bring up. They said one option would be you pay players per game. I thought that's how they do it anyway. Don't they get game checks, right? You get a salary for an entire year. Okay. What if you only get paid yeah. a port because so that hourly, salary hourly, is guaranteed. Hourly, like. Yeah, when you sign that contract on the dotted line, that's how much you get in that year, period. That's yeah. how much you're contracted for. Right. What if along the lines of the contract it says unless you don't play 100% all these games. Then, you know what? I may I I may be injured. I may have gotten injured. I'm healthy now, and I understand that I want I don't want to risk getting hurt again. Right. Am I going to play cuz I want my money? How, how many players you think would play cuz they want their money or I think my health is more important. I'm going to sit out this game. Cuz because then cuz then that would actually put the power in the players' hands and say, you know what, coach, I know you had me on the list today to suit up. Yeah. But my ham, my hammy is bothering me, you know what I'm saying, since I took that last shot in the last game. So I'm going to go ahead and sit this one out because in my contract, you know, I'll take the pay cut this game, you know. So 
Mm, that's another yeah, angle from that too. Yeah, that's a great area in there. And also, I remember uh, years ago, maybe a couple years ago, three, four years ago, maybe, they were talking about this NBA season being too long. 82 games See? being too long. That the season should be shortened. Come on, man. I think that's a think cop that's, out, man. That's so. some. That, that's weak. And I haven't heard this in in a while. I, I mean, I I've heard I've heard premier players say it, like LeBron James. I've heard yeah. a lot of great players, KD. You know, yeah. shorten the season. Short, like I don't understand that things change. Times have changed. Technology has gotten better. Medicine has gotten better. Right. You know, medical staffs on NBA teams have, have gotten better. Why are we shortening the season? Shouldn't it be? Athletes are just freakish nowadays, you know? That's true. That's it's something true. in the water and the chicken we eating. We jumping higher, shooting from, long, from longer distances. But that doesn't mean that the human body is less prone to being worn down or injured. But I'm saying what I'm saying is because everything has gotten better, has progressed, we have things that we can do, methods and programs that we can put our bodies on to help us be and endure that longevity. LeBron I mean, is 45 years old right now. He is. He's 45 years old. He is. This is 22nd season in the NBA. And look at him. <laughs> and I'm just sitting there agreeing with you. <laughs> <laughs> he is, yeah, 45. <laughs> yup, dang. He's still yeah. going strong, man. Yeah, I mean, he, I'm is, still he is getting up there. I'm still, I'm still here. here. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I, I don't think, I think that's a cop out. I think that's an excuse. I think that the greats have done it in order to maintain Achieve that greatness. You don't want to finish a season with an asterisk by it. Imagine the first 60 game season. Do you feel like you've really accomplished, you know, that great feat, that climb up the mountain? We reached the top. We made it all the way through, and I might have played all 60 games. But knowing that there were 22 games that I missed that previously was the standard. Previously on power. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm sorry. You get, get what up. I'm but I, I feel you. I'm just thinking. I feel you. I'm challenging I that. I think these players need to suck it up, figure it out. Because you got to show up for work, man. Period. You get paid. If you don't show up for work, you don't get paid. You get sick days when you're a teacher. Yeah. But you know what I'm saying? You don't you get earn to... those days. Yeah, yeah. Kawhi, he earned some time off. You know what I'm saying? But, Maybe, but when you're expected to perform. you expected to perform. Man. You, you got to you gotta show up. No man. other choice. I guess. I guess. I see both sides. Yeah. I'm sorry. I see both sides. But you know what I'm saying? Seeing both sides of the arguments. Uh-huh. Where you going to take is, it? Where we're going to take it next. Uh huh. Seeing both sides of how people view gun ownership uh -huh. and the Second Amendment. Two. Some people are afraid. Others, like myself, feel like it is necessary. So, this section of the cast is the Second Amendment section. And the reason that I wanted to speak about this is because I personally feel that there is an agenda in mainstream media. When we speak about firearms and we speak about guns, the gun itself is demonized. Almost nine times out of ten. Anytime there's a shooting... Anytime there's bad, a violent gun. altercation. That's a bad gun. The gun is blamed. That's a bad gun. We should pass stricter gun laws. Well, my friends, I, along with many other Americans, tend to disagree. Gun ownership is necessary mm. in this country today. And I <laughs> have the facts oh, and the stories the facts. to prove it. I, myself... I would like to take back ownership of the narrative of firearms and gun ownership and say it's not bad. Every time we hear a story about guns, there's somebody who's psycho, who has a gun, who goes out and shoots innocent people. But what about on the other side of that, 
someone who is a responsible gun owner. 100%. Who defends themselves. Are like you, so. You bear arms. I bear arms. I want to... One, go ahead. I'm sorry. You got it. Go ahead. Pregnant woman, November 4th. Oh, we have. 2019. Uh huh. Pregnant Florida woman kills home intruder with an AR 15. He trying to break in? <clears throat> Allow me to mm-hmm. elaborate. A pregnant Florida woman saved her husband and daughter's lives oh, oh, by rose, killing a home intruder with an AR-15. The mom, who was eight months pregnant, retrieved the weapon after the intruders pistol-whipped her husband and violently oh, grabbed oh. their 11-year-old daughter last week. Oh, you got to die. They came in heavily hooded and masked, her husband, Jeremy King, told Bay News at 9. As soon as they had got the back door open, they had a pistol on me and was grabbing my 11-year-old daughter. As the father was getting beaten, his wife went to the bedroom to obtain the firearm. She then fired one shot, hit one of the assailants. When he came towards the back door in her line of sight, she clipped him. Ooh. King added. He made it from my back door to roughly 200 feet out in the front dish before the AR did its thing. Ooh, shots rang out. One of the two intruders was found dead in a nearby ditch while the other is still on the loose. King was left with a fractured eye socket, a fractured sinus cavity, Ooh. a concussion, 20 stitches, and three staples in his head after the attack. Damn. He said his family didn't know the perpetrators, nor do they know why they were targeted. So, ladies and gentlemen, do you believe that if there wasn't a legal firearm in that household the night of this incident, this family would still be alive to tell that story? Absolutely not. I'm pretty sure they would agree with me. My man had, oh. So, she was not charged. I'm not sure where this case goes mm. after this incident. Because so many times you hear you do somebody hear. defending their own, you and, know. And they get charged. And it's because maybe they didn't have the license or it wasn't registered to them. Or um, I've heard another story where the guy had served time. So legally, he should never have a firearm after that and he was defending his house somebody broke in and he shot and killed the uh the assailant yes okay and he ended up getting charged because he was already a convicted felon so <clears throat> yeah so this it, there that, that and this is why this conversation needs to happen so that people understand that there is a certain way that you go about defending like it's a responsibility to have a firearm but once you go to pull that trigger irregardless of whether you're in the right or in the wrong there is a certain way that you go about speaking to the police it's a certain way you go about defending yourself because at the end of the day there is going to be a trial there is going to be an investigation especially if somebody loses their life and there's going to be a defense attorney, a prosecution attorney. The defense attorney is going to defend you. The, the, pros- the prosecution, that attorney's main job is to make it seem like you unlawfully pulled that trigger. So, with that being said, do you feel like there is an attack on legal, responsible gun ownership in America. We got some work to do. I know that much. We have a lot of work to do, man. And which is why we're having this conversation, which is why I felt like it was important to have this segment in this podcast and podcast to come in the future every single week because we have to start talking about this, man. I feel like it is our God-given duty and our God-given right 
as not only just Americans, but as men to protect our family and protect we our households. Protect house. And what better to do it than with the firearm? If not with your own hands, if you don't know martial arts, you, get to. you need the firearm. So that's my stance on it, man. Would you ever do a cast with your arms on the table? Just like right here? That wouldn't be illegal. You we we own the you own the rights to I, that. Yeah, I legally own my firearms. Um Oh, but it's on know. YouTube, so Yeah, not. that that's kinda taboo. It's it's kinda you tread in dangerous ground, it's it, it'll get yeah. sticky. So let's not even throw any ambiguity <laughs> in the situation. Yeah, let's uh, you know. But we will talk about it though. Absolutely. We will absolutely but, talk about it. And I would love to know you guys' opinions on it. But Jay, do you have something to say though? Yes. So okay. I'm thinking the whole time, I successfully put down someone who broke in my house. I have my arms in my hand. Police comes to the door. I'm a black man. I got a do-rag on. My pants might be just sagging a little bit because I'm at the crib. They they come up in the crib. They see me with my arm, pow, pow, pow. The black man is dead, you know. I can't help but think that some of the people who have successfully defended their home because of some somebody breaking in or what have you, and because we've heard so many stories about police officers just jumping the gun, mm-hmm. killing innocent people, I think about that. But I understand the 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 goal of this segment is to educate, to inform. We we want you guys to take a lot away from this situation because we're gonna be bringing these different scenarios pretty much every episode uh, when we had yeah. the time to yeah it looks like we kind of yeah we, we run ran over. out we, we running over but yeah like i said man i just basically want to introduce a new way of looking at gun ownership and firearms in america without demonizing it let's take a real look and let's take control of the narrative and let me introduce some new stories to you that you might not hear on mainstream media yeah, yeah, and the fact yeah. that you don't hear these stories on mainstream media we have to question that. Say it with your chest, I think. Absolutely. Say it with your chest. And another thing I'm going to say with my chest is we are out of time. <laughs> so, um, you know, uh, we, we <laughs> this is what? Episode two, season three, man. Yes, sir. We, we still getting back into the mode. Still getting back into the we flow, see you. man. And we appreciate each and every one of you sets of ears and eyes out there listening to us and watching us on YouTube, iTunes. Please leave us a review. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think of the show. Does J. Diddy look good in his red? Ooh, one of my favorite oh. colors to wear. No homo. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, man. Um, and the voicemail line. The voicemail line. Do you have it on hand, my friend? Give me like... Four seconds. One, two, three, four. Seven, oh, wait. Three, two, zero, <laughs> nine, four, five, one. You if you remember it. the other jingle. <laughs> you can but sing it. again, leave a voicemail. Call. We will yes. answer that call. We will listen to that voicemail. And yes, 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 you will have the opportunity to be heard on our show. You will five be. Five in the fry at 708 320 Nine four one five. All right, don't hesitate, y'all. Absolutely, man. It's been a pleasure. It has been a pleasure. This is another week of a full episode of Five in the Five Podcast. Come on, man. Until we meet again. My name is Faye Belangelo. And this is your boy, your co-host, Jay Diddy. We like to bid you guys farewell. And God bless. You are now listening to Five and a Five. Hey. Ooh, wee, wee.